Hello and welcome to my presentation on the origin of viruses. So firstly, what are viruses? Viruses, meaning poison in Latin, are microscopic parasites slash agents that infect cells and cause disease. They cause disease by integrating their genetic material into the host genome, allowing the host to produce the proteins needed for the virus. Viruses are the most diverse group of organisms on the planet. They are able to reproduce very rapidly and have the ability to evolve through mutations and genetic recombination. Viruses were first discovered in 1892 by Dmitry Ivansky, who found that sap from a diseased tobacco plant remained infectious to healthy tobacco plants despite having been filtered out. Maritinus Birkneck called the filtered infectious substance a virus. Viruses are very diverse. The two main structures are that of a bacteriophage, which is a virus that infects and replicates inside of a bacterium. This has DNA enclosed within a protein coat, also known as a capsid, whilst there is another structure known as a viral tegrament. This is a retrovirus, and this is involved in affecting the immune system. This has RNA enclosed within the envelope protein. The three different hypotheses for the origin of viruses. Viruses are said to have evolved 1.5 billion years ago. The three different hypotheses are the regressive evolution hypothesis, the escaped host gene hypothesis, and the precellular origin hypothesis. However, none of these hypotheses explain the origin of viruses, but these are just what have been proposed. The precellular origin hypothesis is said to be the most popular out of the three. The first hypothesis is the regressive hypothesis. This suggests that viruses arose from cellular organisms, which was most likely a bacterium. The cellular organisms formed viruses by acquiring the ability to gradually discard their genes until they became simpler organisms, which are the viruses that we see today. The evidence that viruses arose from bacteria are present in bacteriums which show similar characteristics to that of a virus. These are known as virus-like bacteriums. The first example of that is a bacterium, known as bronchia, that infects aphids. This has the ability to discard 70% of their genome. Secondly, chlamydiae is a bacterium that is unable to reproduce on its own and must have a host cell, which is very similar to that of a virus. And thirdly, Rikaske, whose replication cycle is very similar to that of a retrovirus, as it infects a healthy cell and replaces its genome with the host, and then is able to move on to the next cell and infect there. However, there is no evidence that this process is responsible for the origin of viruses, as the recessive theory predicts that viruses and bacteria share common ancestors, however they are both very structurally and genetically different. Also, the genome size of viruses is much smaller to that of a bacterium, and this is because it is limited by fitness costs, so therefore it is unsure how it had previously existed with a larger genome, like that shown in bacteria. The second hypothesis is the escaped host gene hypothesis. Genetic material of a host cell has escaped over time, as the genetic material was no longer needed, and through horizontal gene transfer, the genetic material was able to evolve to become a virus. In the host genome, it was most likely mRNA molecules that acquired the ability to self-replicate and form a protective protein code which allowed them to exist independently of the cells. It is proposed that both DNA and RNA viruses existed after the first cellular organism, so this is considered a post-cellular theory of viruses. Eukaryotic viruses originated in eukaryotic genomes, whilst bacteria formed the bacteriophage. However, this method does not explain the formation of the complex capsids and other particles that are present in viruses, but not in the host. The third hypothesis is the precellular origin hypothesis. This suggests that RNA viruses are the descendants of precellular RNA life forms or proteins that date back billions of years to the beginning of time. Through evolutionary time, they have adopted a parasitic lifestyle. The evidence for this theory is because viruses with similar viral ma ma machinery are present in three groups of life, the bacteria, archaea, and also the eukaryotes. DNA viruses are remnants of... DNA replicas, while retroviruses are the descent of the first molecules that were able to transition between RNA and DNA. But how did viruses form? It is suggested that the viruses evolved from a protein, which then evolved into a viroid, which then evolved into a virus. A viroid is a molecule of RNA that is not classified a virus because they lack a protein coat. However, they share characteristics that are common to a virus. The evidence that this model was correct is from a molecule known as a pyroin. This is an infectious protein molecule that does not contain DNA or RNA. Although pyroins are fundamentally different to viruses and viroids, they dis this discovery suggested that viruses could have evolved from self-replicating molecules. Thank you for listening.